welcome everyone to today's webcast, Introduction to Amazon QuickSight. I'll introduce myself quickly. So my name's Robbie Shaw. I'm a data analytics consultant at Thoroughgood. I am based out of our Singapore office and I've extensive experience in both data visualization, but also cloud data platforms, including AWS. So I think I'm pretty well situated to, to present on Amazon QuickSight. I've put up my contact details there. So my email and my LinkedIn, do email me if you have any questions and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Even if it's just a LinkedIn, if you think you have some questions later, please go ahead. I'm more than happy to, to reply to you. Agenda for today. First of all, we're gonna intro Thoroughgood. If you've attended our webcast before, you will have probably seen the slides, but for anyone new, it's important to let them know sort of who we are and what we do as well. Then I'll get into the, the sort of meat of the slides with just an overview of Amazon QuickSight. Then I think the sort of most informative bit for everyone will be the product demo. So to see the tool in action is always good. Uh, that's part three. And then finally, I'll round off with some next steps for QuickSight and basically how Thoroughgood can help you get started with the tool as well. So intro to Thoroughgood. So we are data engineering, data science and data visualization specialists and we are fully independent, meaning that we'll be able to offer the best advice. We're not swayed by certain technologies. We're very customer oriented. So all the advice we give is gonna have pure focus on, on your business and answering the business questions that you know, plague your business every day. So while we bring extensive analytics knowledge and extensive technological knowledge, what we really drive into is understanding your business, understand the, the problems that are affecting it and how analytics and technology can help answer those questions. We operate globally. So like I said, I'm in Singapore, but I was previously working out of our London office. We also have offices in Philadelphia, Boston, Sao Paulo and Bangalore. And then in terms of the different strategies, solutions and services that we offer. So majority of our work is application design and development. So we actually do end-to-end -end development all the way from data sourcing, data data platforms in the cloud, um, any sort of advanced analytics or data science on top of that, all the way through to final data reporting and data visualization. So we can do that all as one. We can also do particular bits of it. Further to that, we do strategies and roadmaps. So designing your digital transformation journey, advising on that for the next one, five or 10 years, planning business modeling, data analytics services, supporting applications, whether we've built them or someone else has built them. And we also do a lot of user empowerment. So training, in-house teams in certain technologies as well and helping those tools adopt within within your organization. So like I said, we, we've extensive knowledge, extensive knowledge in analytics and technology. So how do we stay on top of the technology? It's through partnering and it's through working regularly with these technologies. So I've got across the top there are key cloud platforms. So these are the three world leading cloud platforms and we work with all three of them. Uh, we work with Azure, which is a mic the Microsoft Cloud Platform. We work with AWS, we're a select consulting partner, and Google, Google Cloud Platform we work with as, well, with as well. Additionally, we're also really closely partnered to Databricks, which integrates really well into any of these three cloud technologies, and it's a really useful unified data analytics platform. Then focusing in specifically on AWS, because this website's about ClickSite, we have experience in ClickSight and experience in a number of other data visualization technologies as well. So you've got Tableau listed, you've got Click listed. Additionally, Power BI would be one of the more well-known ones. It's included within our Microsoft partnership as well. So Amazon QuickSight, an overview. So basically, in terms of an overall definition, Amazon QuickSight is a fully managed cloud-based business intelligence service within the AWS product suite. It is an AWS product. It's a business intelligence tool. So data visualization, servicing insights, servicing information that's going to help your business. And then the real key point of note here is that it's fully managed and cloud-based. So everything's in the cloud and you access it it's through the browser and you don't need to sort of provision the resources behind it. Your infrastructure team don't need to do that. All of that is handled by AWS, which is a real highlight of the tool. Then basically QuickSight allows users to connect to your data, that data and enhance it, creating calculated fields or adding further advanced analytics. Then you create visualizations that are gonna let you identify trends, 
and then basically you'll have the ability to to share these insights and share these trends with with end users with business stakeholders with decision makers or even someone else who you're hoping to who's hoping to develop further on the dashboard that you've already made as well so how does it fit into an overall analytics architecture well it would fit in most seamlessly with aws so to look at that sort of overall architecture you might have your source source data from any number of sources you set up your data lake using amazon s3 so that's a an amazon aws tool that's basically amazon's sort of leading file storage and then you have your different layers within that your raw input output or some people call it bronze silver gold where basically you land data in its rawest form first and then you cleanse you process it you transform it by the time you get to the out so that by the time you get to the output layer or the gold layer data is ready to be to be used and reported on and viewed by the business so you've a number of aws technologies that allow you ingest data into that first first raw layer then you've a number of technologies that'll help you move data into a semantic layer so something like amazon rds or amazon redshift where basically you're, you're storing your data in structured tables in a database you can plug in your SageMaker, aws SageMaker, any of your ml and ai services as well and then really amazon quicksight is where you can round out and have your sort of full overall clean data visualizations that are easiest to understand for the business and you can then connect that feeding direct data directly from redshift directly from rds or alternatively you can read directly from from s3 so to focus back in on on just the you've seen how it fits into the architecture let's focus back in on just amazon quicksight itself so what are some of the key features so it's got a really fast in-memory engine called spice which i'll touch on more uh, in a later slide it's got built-in data connectors with AWS components, but also with you know, pretty common data sources like SQL, Spark, Snowflake, Salesforce. I realize they're all S's, but they are pretty good examples. It integrates with AWS services. So yes, it's got those connectors to your original data stores, but also you can access it within the AWS console. All of it, access to it can be controlled by identity access and management. So AWS is single sign-on will allow you to sign on to to quicksight as well and you can manage all the billing within aws as well it has fully cloud-based development so basically you develop using the browser version of it there's no application or tool you download and install which can be really beneficial when when starting up and not having to to jump through hoops or you know get downloads or installs approved by it anything like that you pay for what you use um, i'll touch on this a lot a lot more in a later slide but basically there's an interesting pay-as-you-go model offered by quicksight like i said in the original definition it's fully managed cloud-based so it's serverless so basically you can get started on quicksight right away because everything's already provisioned for you you can get going at basically the click of a button and then once you've got going the the workloads behind basically under the hood are going to be able to to meet whatever demands you have from people using the dashboards because it's fully cloud-based and fully managed by, by AWS. And then finally, they've put a lot of effort into making embedded analytics as straightforward as possible to set up so that users can view these really clever visualizations, but within sort of the context that they're used to accessing data, whether that's in a, a web application or a website or anything like that. So Amazon QuickSight Spice, Spice is that engine that I was talking about. So it stands for super fast parallel in-memory calculation engine and i'm glad they they didn't just settle for fast they allowed it to be super fast because fpi doesn't really have the same ring to it but basically what it does is allows you to set up data sets in spice that are connecting to your your data source components so in in this diagram it's just your aws components but it could be others as well and basically you import the data into spice you can edit that data that sort of connection so it could have say regular refreshes as well basically it's imported in that's where amazon quicksight sort of front-end dashboards are going to access the data from they're going to access it from spice and then spice is basically the processing engine behind any advanced calculations or any common bi operations so joins pivots drill downs filters all of that is basically driven by spice 
it'll automatically scale to meet uh, high concurrency. So basically, if there's multiple users accessing the same dashboard, the same data, Spice will will be able to scale up to, to meet that demand. And basically, it supports data sets up to 250 million rows or 500 megabytes, which is pretty mega for an in-memory in -memory data visualization engine. If you do need to go larger than that, you can with QuickSight. It just means that you would have to direct query the original data source. So you'd basically skip Spice and you'd be directly drawing data in from, say, Amazon Redshift every time that you change the visuals in, in Amazon QuickSight. So I mentioned the interesting pay-as-you-go model. So I'll touch on that within this overall set of licensing and costs. So first of all, you have have authors, and they're really your developers. They're the ones creating dashboards and then sharing them with end users. This is priced at basically a set amount per month to be able to, to be an author and create in, in QuickSight. That cost per month gets cheaper if you commit longer term, say like on an annual basis as well. Then what's quite what's probably probably more interesting in the pricing model is the readers. So these are people who are just going to consume the basically the end dashboard um, that the author has created. So they can explore dashboards, they can download the data, they can't develop dashboards. But then there's two different types of pricing for, for this reader. So you've got user pricing, which is basically you pay a really minimal amount per each session. So each time you're you're opening QuickSight and looking at the dashboard. And then that amount ranks up, rack, ranks up, and then basically there's a cap that once you hit that point, that's the maximum you can be charged uh, for the rest of that month. Or there's capacity pricing, where basically you just buy you buy your sessions in bulk, and then you distribute them among among a number of users as well. So it's pretty flexible based on sort of how many readers you would have and how often they'd be reading the data. Then there's additional costs for stuff like uh, alerts and ML part anomaly detection, gain really minimal amount per like thousand metrics tracked as well. And then we have Spice as well. So each author gets 10 gigabytes automatically with, uh, with their subscription, but you can, you can have extra gigabytes beyond that. So it's again, a really small amount per gigabyte per, gigabyte per month added on top of that, of that 10, that 10 gigabyte. And finally, you can provide extra capability with Q that's basically natural language processing. So the ability to basically, for a reader, say, to skip a developer and say, rather than asking a developer like myself to create a visual that gives them sales over the last six months, they can just request that using sort of an English language question. What were my sales each month for the past six months through the supermarket channel? something like that, they can ask directly of the data and it'll be able to spit out the right answer. As a developer myself, I might be slightly biased in saying, I think that an actual human there who understands what you're asking, why you're asking it and can suggest something else might be a bit better. But that's sort of beside the point, the point here in licensing and costs is that Amazon QuickSight, if you want the additional queue, you'll pay a bit more, but you will get uh, a lot more capability as well. And I haven't mentioned any of the actual prices because I know they, they can they could change quite often, but you can go to this this website here, you can contact us, we can give our, our best advice on sort of what the best price pricing model is to follow based on the type of your organize what what type your organization is and say how many users it has, how you want to use QuickSight. Um, additionally, you can contact uh, an Amazon rep about it as well. So to the, the product demo next. So Basically, in this demo, I'm going to be a, a business analyst. I'm going to be working for a CBG company, and I've been hired to create a sort of high-level sales dashboard for executives so they can basically look at overall sales in a relatively detailed way. They basically want a mixture of sort of key KPIs that they always track, and they also want to be looking at the trends over time, particularly in the last year. They do this already. They do a version of this already, but they use spreadsheets. Basically, what they've done recently is They've moved all of their data into the AWS stack of technologies. So they've thought, now's the time we're making an investment in technology where we're investing in AWS. Let's upgrade our reporting and QuickSight's the obvious answer to, to do that because it's AWS's own visualization tool and data that's ready to be reported on is stored in Amazon S3. If I jump over to my AWS management console, you can see here 
I'm in AWS, I'm signed in as myself in the Thurgood marketing environment, and I want to see my files in my S3 data storage, so I can search S3 and click on it. That might take a bit of time to come up, so what I'm going to do is open the bucket that I already had opened. And what I've got is my sales data. This is updated monthly, and it's got overall sales, but it's got a lot of extra dimensions and referential data as well. So my sales includes sort of product keys and customer keys, channel keys, time keys, but all of these other CSVs are dimensions that are going to add further context to that key, which you'll understand if you've sort of worked with these types of fact and dimension data models. Um, but basically the point is that a lot of this data is um, related in some way and it's stored in CSV files and we're going to bring it all in to, to our QuickSight dashboard. So to get to QuickSight, again, I'm still in the, if I can spell QuickSight correctly, I'm still in the AWS console, but I can search QuickSight and if I click here, it would open it automatically. But I want to keep this set of files open so I can reference them later on. So what I'm going to do is jump to this tab here. And so this is what happens. This is what opens whenever you search and open click site via the way I just did via the search bar. And what you can see here is we're in our home page. You've got your typical favorites, recents, community, but basically the three key ones are data sets, analyses, and dashboards. And basically from bottom to top is how you'll sort of is the process that you'll follow to create these sort of end user dashboards. So first of all, what you're going to do is load in data sets. So what you can see is I've done that already. So I've loaded in channel product city customer time, which is all of this apart from sales. And my sales data is actually contained within here, but it's my overall data set. So it's called intro to quick site data set because actually it includes sales, but it also includes channel product city, et cetera, because they've all been joined together. To give a visual of this, I'll just show you quick sites data prep section. So what you can see here is I originally loaded in my intro to quick site data set sales. So I did that by opening the native connector and basically pointing it to the S3 bucket that I showed you earlier. And then I brought in data sets that I'd already loaded in and were already existing as data sets in QuickSight. And you can see they're all spice, so they're all in memory. And then actually I used the, 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 the user in, interface here to basically say, take my channel data, take my sales data and join it together on the channel key. So, and I did the same with with product and all the other dimensions as well, as you can see going on. And basically what that leaves us with is a full data set with all of my sales data, but also all of my, my di dimension reference, my dimension data that I can reference to get more detail on particular channels or particular cities or particular products. And then what I did was I actually published and visualized that. So whenever it got published, it arrived here. But whenever, whenever I went to visualize, it gave me this, this dashboard. So it didn't give me this, it gave me a blank dashboard, but I've developed some of it already. So I'll create a couple more visuals just to give you an idea, a flavor of the tool. They asked for key KPIs. They wanted profit loss, they wanted GSV, but what they also wanted was a third one that was gonna be total overheads. So I'm gonna duplicate the one I had I'm going to rename it total overheads, save that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my sales overheads. And I'm not going to add it to the existing data. I'm going to replace it. And there you can see what I've brought in is my, my sales overheads. Now, the problem is it's not very clean. So what I'm going to do is just make sure it's shown as currency because it is. it does have a dollar valuation. And I'm going to make sure it's appearing with this million as well, just by changing the union, units to millions. Okay, so I've made my, my final KPI there. And what else do I have here? So I've got a profit and loss sort of across the whole year. 
I've got GSV, so gross sales value versus net invoice value across the whole year as well on a line and bar chart. And then I've got my sales overhead split up by my different channels as well. So both in terms of share of sales overheads, but also the actual sales overheads value itself. And I wanna add something here. So what I'm gonna do, if I wanna add a visual completely from scratch is go up here, add visual. It puts it into the most appropriate space, which is quite nice. And here I wanna focus on my customers. So I'm a CPG company and I actually end up selling to, to retailers. So you can see I've got all my, my retailers listed out here on the left. And at the minute, the value beside it is just how many times that retailer name is appearing in my, in my data, which isn't what I want. I want to look at gross sales value. So what I'm going to do is drag that on to the, basically the X axis here. And now you can see, I've got my gross sales value for deals pharmacy, which is my biggest customer. Now I want a little more distinction as well. I'd like to know which category some this, which category of product this sales value belongs to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the data set and you can see what it's, what it's done is it's tried to give me the, the, the visual that I want. So it's given me both sales value for each customer for hair care and for skincare, my two, my two uh, categories, but it's not quite what I want because I made a good guess, but I'm just going to change the visual type to get a stacked, uh, stacked chart here. And then what I'm also going to do is uh, I'm going to sort my data as well so that the largest are coming at the top. Here allows me to format the visual. So the one thing that's really annoying me is having this scroll bar in place. I don't really like having to use it. So I'm going to untick that show data zoom and give it overall. But at the same time, the, the bar was doing something useful in terms of keeping out some of these smaller, less relevant customers, keeping them out of view. I still would like to keep them out of view, but maybe in a more systematic way. So what I'm going to do to handle that is create a parameter. I'm going to call it top customers. Integer single value, default value by five. So I've created a parameter now, and actually I'm going to add it to my, I'm going to add it as a slider to my control panel at the top. So now if I expand my control panel, you can see I've got basically filters that I can apply, but also I have a, a parameter that I can change here. So it doesn't really affect anything at the minute, but what I want to do here is add a filter to the visuals that visual that I just made. I should also point out the title and the axes are a bit messy. You can clean them up, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to. So I'm going to add a filter for customer description, which is basically what I have on the Y axis here. And Let's just edit how it behaves. So I want it to do a top and bottom filter. So I want it to filter to the top and I want it to use the top cross customers parameter that I made. And I want it to do it based on gross sales value. So if I apply that, what you can see here is that now it's filtered to my top five customers and you can see that's what I have selected up here. And if I move that up to six, say, the filter, re the visual reevaluates, and now I have six top customers here. But we're only affecting one visual, so I'm going to just move it down into the actual sheet. Go it across just for neatness sake, and then there you can see, I can even switch to top 10 and it's only affecting this visual directly. So it makes logical sense to have it there. So that's my, my dashboard complete. I've, I've done everything that the key stakeholders have asked. So I'm just going to publish the dashboard. I'm gonna replace an existing one that I made when I was practicing this demo. And this is basically what an end user would go in and see in terms of accessing the dashboard. So they can see profit and loss, they can see 
net invoice value against gross sales value. They can see the overheads per channel and they have the ability to switch this, this parameter as well to see the number of customers, top customers that they want to see. How we would work normally is they would give us our feedback and we would actually take this away and provide you know later iterations further iterations of it to to give the business users exactly what they want but i hope that's given you an idea of how how quicksight works through a demo so i'll just bounce back to the the slides so just to round out i'll give a, a sort of final summary around what i see are the benefits and potential drawbacks of quicksight so the, the key benefits I see are that, first of all, it's all within AWS. So AWS is the market leader in cloud. Quicksight is really well integrated with all of that in terms of how it connects the data, how you access the tool itself. Being a part of AWS is, is a major pro. The pricing model has the pay as you go pricing model. So you have the option to basically only pay for what you're actually using. But also there's, there's a bit of flex to it. There's different options. There's add-ons um, that basically allow you to find the, the real value, key value for your organization. It's fully browser-based. Some people see that as a negative, but I think it allows you to start up quicker. I think it's sort of where the future is going with development in that it's not that difficult to be online anytime you need to develop. A tool like Databricks as well, it is fully browser-based. A lot of the sort of cloud platform stuff you work on it through fully through the browser as well so i think it's sort of heading towards the future one point i haven't really made in, in the earlier slides is that quicksight are continuously improving this tool it's actually really impressive how often they're bringing out new features it's pretty much every two weeks they have something new for the for the tool so basically the the real benefit is that if you think this tool is pretty good now it's going to be even better in in a year two year or even two years or even you know two months from now it's going to be really good and finally, scalability. So as I said, it's fully managed. You don't have to provision resources. You don't have to manage the infrastructure. It can meet the demand that you require of it. Um, so even if QuickSight takes off in your organization, it should be able to, to handle that level of demand. Potential drawbacks I see is that QuickSight isn't maybe quite as well set up for multi-cloud as, as I'd maybe hope it would be. So there aren't that many native connectors to non-AWS components. At the same time, the AWS components are market leading, so maybe you should be using those instead. Good workarounds will always exist if your data exists somewhere that QuickSight can't directly connect to. There's probably some way to sort of stage your data somewhere else before moving it to QuickSight. And finally, bat that point away as, as well. The tool is continuously improving, so I'm sure more connectors will, will appear in the future. And the second point is really just the maturity of the tool. So maybe not in terms of actual years that it's existed, but basically how widely it's been used and how long that's been for. So basically the end result of it is that there's there's less community content online. So there's less sort of, for want of a better word, nerds out there who've worked out uh, a particular complicated way to display this visual or anything like that. They haven't put out all those solutions online. There isn't as wide a presence of online forum content for you to sort of pick through if you're struggling with, with QuickSight or with a particular thing that you're trying to do. There's no marketplace of third-party visuals. So you have your, on the bottom left, when I did the demo, you have your regular set of visuals. In other tools, you might have a sort of marketplace you can go to to, to see visuals that other people have built, and you can actually use them and apply them to your your reports, AWS doesn't quite have that. And finally, if you are looking to say, bring in a load of QuickSight skilled developers, there aren't as many on the market as there are who are skilled in, in other data visualization tools. But again, in counter to all those points, it's gonna improve over time. There's loads of QuickSight training available. I'm sure you can get, if you need contact for, you know, a rep or, you know, some recommendation of training, I'm sure we can provide that to you. And, Finally, in terms of getting skilled developers, it's still data visualization. It's still kind of similar to maybe other data visualization tools that maybe have gone out of fashion in the past that people aren't using so much anymore. Basically, there is a foundation of sort of data visualization knowledge that can be applied directly and instantly to QuickSight. So you're not starting from completely zero on it as well.
so finally, next steps with QuickSight. How can Thoroughgood help you get started with your first steps? So if you're in any way tech data savvy or, or even just curious, sample the functionality yourself. Go to aws.amazon.com slash QuickSight. There's a free trial option. Get a flavor for this look for the tool yourself. If you want to do something maybe a little more beyond that, feel free to reach out to me or reach out to my Thoroughgood colleagues if you know them better. We can explore potential use cases. We could create demos or even proofs of concept, prove the value of that use case. If you want to migrate your current data reporting, whether it's in spreadsheets or a different data visualization tool and bring it all to, to QuickSight, we can look at the feasibility of that and help you, you design the best way to do that. We can review QuickSight dashboards that you've created already, and we can review your overall backend data architecture, whether it's on-premise, whether it's on cloud. And we can see where QuickSight could, could fit into that. And finally, we are planning to have a, a QuickSight hands-on workshop at some point in the future. If that's something that you think is of real interest to you, contact me. My email's up there. And let me know if you're, if you're interested. Because if we hear there's more interest, it legitimizes us putting in the effort to, to host the event and put together the content. So have a good day. Thanks.